What's up YouTube, I'm Introduce and today I want to introduce you to the five most important tips when it comes to gameplay editing. If you didn't know, I edit for B. Bradman. Oh my. Did some work for Joe Woe. And also it's Iron. So I thought I'd share these five tools and shortcuts so that you can get started with your own edits. It will be based on the beginner kind of side. We will go over all these uh, good and juicy edits that you can create. We will do all of that. But today I just want to go over the five things that will get you started and not shy away from edits. All right. So I want to get you guys created and that's why we hop right into DaVinci Resolve. All right, as you can see, I'm in my little box here. There's the keyboard and you're looking right at DaVinci Resolve, the editing page, the third to the left. But uh, if you want me to go over importing and all these nice, neat uh, organizing ways, uh, we can do that in a different video today. I really just want to talk about the shortcuts and stuff that I use the most. For that, you will need to know that up in the top left corner, you've got DaVinci Resolve and you can open keyboard customizations if you want to find out all the shortcuts that there are and what you can configure. One thing I want to show that's not part of the tips actually just yet, but that is insert. So insert is F9 because we didn't insert yet what we want to use. Uh, I thought I'd show you that really quickly. Um, I'm just going to close it because I don't want to change anything. And we need to go to the gameplay. And I already know where, where it is, what I want to use. And that is roughly right about here. And I'm going to put I for in. And then we're going to use an out point that can be somewhere here. Out. Actually, maybe, maybe just go a little bit further to I. Maybe, maybe like here, I. And now we press F9. And you see this little clip has now been inserted in our timeline. For you to know I is in point, O is out point, and then you just press F9 to import. You don't need to do any of these dragging and whatnot. You can also just mark all of them and import them. But this is just like a side little needy deedy tidy tip. Now let's get into the juicy stuff of what we want to talk about. All right, so the first thing that I would notice, you watch the entire video because you want to find the best spots for transitions. You want to cut out the boring parts, etc. So when you do that, you usually watch from A to B and either edit along the way or also you do it after the fact. Either way of these things is usually when you edit on the go and I already edited this one so I know what's going to come up. He will open the box here and turns to the side and that is a part for me where I want to do an edit. I know that already but I think hmm, maybe I want to edit away from this because I don't know what's happening afterwards. So control M and then I just write edit right turn and then I give it an orange mark. You can give it whatever mark you want, but orange for me is just a turn transition or a transition in general. You can also, you know, write things in there. Need to check audio, you need to do this, need to do that. Markers are super important. I use them all the time. So one of the things that's really handy and really good for you to use, because then when you get to the next part, you know from where to where you want to cut because you marked it properly. This marker also shows up in the timeline up here so that you have a broad overview of this entire clip. All right, once we know what we want to do, the second cut, it's all about maneuvering around on the timeline. There is so many different ways. I'm just going to show you my maybe like three or four different ways of doing it. Obviously, you could go just here and click there. And then you also get to the point because like I told you before, this is where the marker is being shown. And then this is where it's shown. Another way is that you go up in the top left to edit index. Then you go on the dots, go to show markers, go to all, and then you see how it's arranged here. You see the colors, you see the notes. It could be that on yours it's hidden behind it, so you might need to drag it out a little, but you should then be able to see it. There we go. See it, or you just use the slider down here. Another thing is, that you maybe want to have the notes kind of further there so you can move that around and then maybe the colors and stuff you also want to have a little closer so you can just adjust that to your liking whatever you prefer to see and what is more important to you but the nice and neat thing then once you know this turn transition edit out right you can click on it and it takes you right to it edit turn right edit turn out right Edit, turn right, edit, turn out right. Another way is to just hold down Alt and then use your mouse wheel 
and that way you can scroll out and you see this entire timeline and then you can move this from side to side. I sometimes use this more because it's just so quick for me to scroll and then scroll back in and out, in and out. There's a lot of different ways to move about this. This is clicking down the mouse wheel. The thing is I always used to use a trackpad and that's why I just have to get used to mouse commands. But yeah, this is one way of how to move around here as well. There's also a shortcut where you hold down control, minus, minus, plus, 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 to zoom in and out. But I would try to not leave my mouse uh, as much as possible because that way you add it a little bit quicker. So just try to use this instead and then you can move around. Either way, this is a way how you get quickly to your editing points. If this is always open, I can see that being really handy too, to just click to these points that you need. Now, obviously, once you know where you want to do the cut, you need to cut, right? I think a lot of people already know how to cut, but if you're new, you may not. So let's go over that shortcut. There's two ways of doing that. You can either grab this tool, which is the cutting tool, blade edit mode. You can press B to get it, you can click on it, and then, once you know where you want to go, which I usually do with the arrows. So if I'm not entirely sure, I use my arrows to go back and forth, a little kind of side tip. That's what I use my arrows for. And then I maybe decide this is a good spot here, somewhere here, where I already selected it, you know, where this thingy is. And yeah, then with the blade tool, you can just go over it and cut it. And then you have the cut made. Another way, that you can do it is with a shortcut that is control and B. And then also you have a cut. That's really good because your hand will be down here anyways. And then you have control and all, but you just use control B and cut really quickly and easy without having to use, like when you move the arrow keys and then go back to the mouse, all of this kind of stuff you don't need to do. This is a really quick and easy way of finding that perfect cut spot and we go right to the out right that's also on the right spot here and then we're like okay well this is a good spot because he starts turning right here I want to do a cut boom and that's how you do cuts really quickly and easy now I personally come from Final Cut and in Final Cut we have a magnetic timeline that means whenever you delete something so go back to A either press I or go back to this mouse symbol and select this. So when you delete something there, it just snaps back into place. If I delete something here, there's a free space thing and then you need to select it and then you need to delete it. But there's also a shortcut for that to make it way quicker, which is one of the reasons why I started to enjoying editing here as well. And that is just using shift and delete, which is called ripple delete. You can bind that to other things, etc. But this is one way to just get things really connected easily. You have got your one clip here and the other one that you want to connect is there. You just select this in the middle, shift, delete, and everything else just moves back in place like it should. All the stuff that you have behind it, if it is stacked on top, for example, will go with it, which is super, super easy and helpful too. So we do a cut here again to show and then and it just stays connected. Everything else stays connected and that is why I love Ripple Delete. You need to use Ripple Delete, otherwise you are going to be missing out. You're going to be taking ages for your edits, all right? So just use Shift Delete whenever you have something in the middle that needs to be gone. All right, now to the next one. This is a little bit more specific to certain transitions, but sometimes you want to have a specific out point and a specific in point of the video that you're editing. For that, you use this tool that's the T and that's the trimming tool right here. So if we are here, T gets you the trimming tool and that is what we need. And what it will do is give us two windows, one on the left and one on the right. The left one shows this clip and the right one shows the other clip. All right, so let's grab one where we might think if we watch this back, that didn't write. Huh. you see, it's just, it's just not fluid. It's not smooth. Huh. It's just what's going on here. That didn't write. So what we need to do is grab, for example, the right clip, and then sometimes it's better to go a little bit closer in, which we now know is Alt and then the, the wheel. And then now we have it here, and we're like, oh, where is a good spot? The turn happens here. Um, 
here it's still straight so yeah let's use let's use it here that sounds good that looks good i like it let's use it so if you just use it without using the t tool let me select it back then you grab it and it will just drag over it it just replaces it and now we are a completely different situations so that's why we want to use the t tool the best thing about this technique is that the other point does not move it just affects the left clip and we're trying to find where it's still fast kind of turning in maybe here maybe this is good and yeah let's just watch it back and hope it's a little smoother that i didn't that i didn't write that i didn't write that looks a lot better to me i think that is a really good one compared to the one before where there was nothing going on but if you have ears you must have noticed that the audio is not good we'll come to that next what you want to do is either bring the one in the front or the one in the back up grab it and bring it up it's handy to have this magnetic tool selected so that you so that it snaps in place and doesn't move weirdly around i selected it afterwards just to make sure that it's there and now what we want to do as this is just the train audio um, what we want to do there is to go alt and just select the bottom clip which is the audio if we select both and just drag the bottom ones both of them move same for this side if we select the bottom and it, then both of them move and we don't have the transition where we wanted it because the clip that is on top is always being viewed in that sense so now we don't have the transition here where we wanted it anymore now it's a little bit earlier and it looks a bit weird again he looks at the box and then he's here. So we don't want that. We undo this. What you need to do for that, as long as this linking tool is enabled, you need to press Alt and then select the one that you want to move. Now you see the red box is just around the bottom one, just around the audio. And we can drag the audio out a little longer and the top one is not affected. And then same for the other one. We select Alt and click on the bottom one. And now we just drag it up until, ooh, that's a bit far. Let's go out a little bit. Now we just drag it up until where he is starting to talk. Kinda here. Uh, I've added that before. Usually you would have headphones on and then uh, do all of that. I don't have them on right now, but I know that he started talking here. You can make it fade in so that it sounds a little bit better. Same for this to fade out. And now Could be more people here he starts talking like, here uh. and then is there and he goes over there, someone, etc. And then he kills him. And that is a really, really nice and easy like, way uh. to do things. So what you have to keep in mind here is that you first, let me undo everything. First, you grab them and drag it up or the other way around. If both of them were up, drag it down. And then you select these clips individually that you want to drag out further. Same for this one, drag that one out further. And then you get, get it so that the audio kind of overlaps. It's a called a J and L cut, but I'm usually not the best with these words. I usually just know how they work. And uh, before, just so that they merge a little bit better, I just makes it more seamless one thing obviously one could argue that now you see that he is not talking here if you want to put in a lot of work which we will get you in the future um and must out his face cam and then it would show him underneath talking etc blah 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 uh, we will get over all of that in the future tutorials so let me know what you want to see next what kind of tutorials you want to see next i'm telling you now we are definitely going to do a transition tutorial about the turn transition we're going to do door transitions. We're going to do so many transitions. But just let me know what you want to see, what you're interested in, and we will go over all of that in the future videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope it showed you a little lot of what you do, how to move things around, and also made you not be too feared of these additional tracks. Sometimes, I didn't say that now, but sometimes a little neat little tip towards the end. I use three tracks so that I can always go one up and one down and mix it up because sometimes these clips are a little close together and if you don't have the spacing let's say we move this down you see that the audio from the first clip is overlapping the one from the second and then we have the audio problem again so 
this is my way of editing. I hope you enjoyed this video and took away something about gameplay editing or editing in general. All the basics explained quite well so that we can now dive into the deeper tutorial kind of edits that help you out more in specific kinds of transitions. Thanks, Bretman, for letting me use your video or your clips in that sense. Uh, we'll link him down below. Make sure to check him out. And if you have any more questions, just really write them in the comments. Come by my Twitch, twitch.tv slash introduce. I stream these edits there, hopefully sometime soon daily, but I'll stream them there and I can't wait to see you guys there. Leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. All right, I'll see you then. Have a good one.